What's up smart homers, my name's Aaron. In a previous video, I showed you guys some basics of Home Assistant dashboards, and so I wanna continue that and show you a bit more in today's video. I'll show you guys some more of my favorite ways to create dashboards, and if you follow along, you'll have a nice start to a mobile dashboard that I think is pretty clean. This video is really a follow-up from my previous video, so if you haven't installed all the things that I've recommended in that video, then you're gonna to need to do that before you continue on with this video. Dashboards and Home Assistant really have come quite a ways since I last showed you guys the basics. There's no drag and drop feature for cards yet, but they've added numbers to cards so you can see what order they're in on the dashboard and it makes them a little bit easier to move around on the dashboard. They've also added something called sub views, which I'll cover a little bit later. They've added a few new cards too, including some statistic cards, an area card, a conditional card, and tile cards. If you want me to go over some of these cards in a video, let me know in the comments. But for now, I wanna focus on a set of custom cards that I use extensively in my mobile dashboard, and those are mushroom cards. These cards are super nice for a mobile dashboard because they have styles similar to Apple and Google mobile operating systems. They're just the right size for tapping with your finger, but they offer enough customization where you can really display a lot of information if you want to. You're gonna to need to install them from the Home Assistant Community Store, so if you don't have hacks set up on your Home Assistant instance, you'll need to do that. Like I said, this is really a follow-up from my previous video, so you need to install all the custom cards and stuff that we did in that video if you want this video to make sense. In hacks, click front end, click the explore and download button, and then search for mushroom if you don't see it at the top of the list. Tap mushroom and then go ahead and install it. We're gonna start with a fresh dashboard that we're gonna make for our mobile application. So we'll click settings, dashboards, add dashboard, and then fill in the required info. I'm gonna call it mobile since it's a mobile dashboard and I'll set the icon to a cell phone and then click create. It shows up on the sidebar, so click it and you'll see that the auto-populated dashboard is what's displayed. We wanna wipe this thing clean, so just like I showed in the previous video, tap the three-dot menu in the upper right corner, click Edit Dashboard, and you'll see a box pop up. Toggle the Start with an Empty Dashboard option and take control. Click the Add Card button in the bottom right corner of the screen, and now the gallery of cards that are available to you are gonna pop up. To get to the mushroom cards, you can either scroll all the way to the bottom of the gallery, or you can just type in mushroom in the search bar, and it's gonna show you only the mushroom cards. If you don't see the cards there, you either need to clear your browser's cache, or you can try restarting Home Assistant. The first card we're gonna look at, and one of my favorites of all the mushroom cards, is the chips card. Chips are small buttons or tiles of information that don't take up a lot of space, but can be customized pretty extensively. There are many different types of chips as you can see in this list, but I'm just gonna go over a couple of them. Before we actually start adding the chips, I like to justify the alignment of the card. This way the chips are spread evenly across the page, which is gonna look good on a mobile phone. Now let's add the back chip. Different from a chip on your shoulder, the back chip will take you back to the previous page in Home Assistant, similar to hitting back on a web browser. This chip is especially useful when you're creating a room views for taking you back to the home view. We'll get into that later. Next, let's add a weather chip. Tap the edit pencil to see the options for this chip. I typically like to leave the conditions off and the temperature on. You can also change the default action if you want, but by default, it's gonna show more info about the forecast when you tap it. So the weather chip only shows the temperature right now, but I'd like to also see the humidity outside. In this case, I'm gonna add a humidity entity to complement that temperature. To do this, I'll use the entity chip, which allows you to display the state of an entity of your choice. I'll choose the humidity entity from the sensor of my choice, and notice that I can change some other things like the icon that's displayed, and I can also change the tap action if I want. But I'm just gonna leave those. Lastly, I wanna add a menu chip. Tapping the menu chip is gonna open the sidebar in Home Assistant, which is by default hidden or collapsed if you're using the mobile application. There is an option to change this menu icon, but I'm just gonna leave it. So now we have all the information and buttons I want displayed at the top, but it kind of looks bad because of the spaces between the chips. I want the two climate chips to be centered and the back and menu buttons to be on each side. We can fix this by using the spacer chip, 
which adds a gap wherever you put it. You add the chip, and then you can move it around with the handle on the side, rearranging the chips as you see fit. Adding one more spacer and placing it after the climate chips keeps everything nice and centered with the back end menu buttons on the outside. Another chip I wanna show you is the conditional chip, which you can use like a persistent notification or warning of some kind. The chip allows you to set certain conditions, really just entity states, that will allow this chip to be visible. It's fairly limited because it doesn't allow you to say things like when a sensor value is above this, it only allows you to say things like when a sensor value is equal to this. The best way to use this chip, I think, is to create input booleans that are triggered based on whether or not a certain condition is met, and then use the state of those input booleans as the condition to turn on or off this chip. Okay, so now I think you have a pretty good idea of how that chips card works, making a nice little banner for your home screen, and you can also create a similar card for each room view in your dashboard. The next card I wanna look at is Mushroom's person card. This card allows you to display the state of a person entity or a device tracker entity in a really nice way. It'll show the entity's picture if there is one and a little badge in the corner that indicates the state of the entity, which is based on the zone. You can set zones by going to settings, areas and zones and clicking zones at the top. Click add zone, give your zone a name and then set the zone on the map and also choose an icon like an office building for a zone called work, etc., and then tap add. Back to the person card, the icon of the zone that you just set is gonna show up on that badge when the entity is in that zone. For my mobile dashboard, I added two person cards, one for me and one for my wife, and then I did some formatting to make them look better. The first thing I wanted to do was add a spacer on either side to center those two person cards, similar to what we did with chips. To do this, I added a blank title mushroom card to each side. To remove the background from the cards, I used card mod, which I showed in my last video, to modify the background color and remove the box shadow and border. After these changes, we now have some neat little person cards that show where each of us are. One of the most powerful cards of all the mushroom cards is the template card. It's super useful because you can pretty much make it show whatever you want. You can see that by default it has a welcome message, but there are options to change the entity that's tied to the card, the icon, icon color, primary or bold information, and secondary information. You can also set the badge icon and color, as well as a picture to replace the icon. Down at the bottom, you can change the layout and set tap actions. What you'll notice is that all of these fields are free text fields, and these allow for templating which is a great way to specify these properties based on information within Home Assistant. If you don't know what templating is, it pretty much allows you to use logic and math to specify what the properties of the card should be, how and when they should be, etc. If you're not experienced with templating, there's a must-see video by Jeff at Slacker Labs where he goes over the basics of templating and it's been super helpful for me to understand how templates work and to make some of these custom cards. I'm gonna leave a link to his video in the description and I highly recommend that you check it out. Let me quickly show you the power of these templates. Let's say you wanted to display the state of an entity like a temperature sensor's current temperature value. To do so, we just type double curly brackets to indicate that we want to display text, type in this line of code, which points to the entity state, and then close the curly braces. You can add text on either side to create a whole sentence if you want. Here's an example of one of my custom cards. In my kitchen room view, I have a refrigerator card that I've made from a template card. It displays the temperature of the fridge and freezer, as well as the instantaneous power usage of the fridge and freezer and the status of the door. When I open the door, the status of the door changes and the fridge icon color also changes. Tapping the card allows me to see more info about the power usage of the appliance. This is a super basic card, just scratching the surface of templating, but it gives you an idea of the power of this card and what you can do with templating. I use some really simple template cards to create some action buttons on my dashboard. So we'll go ahead and create some of those. You can see the five buttons on my mobile dashboard. The first one allows me to open and close the garage door by tapping it, which is actually one of the first videos I ever made, by the way, automating my garage door. The second allows me to turn on my flower watering system. I made a video about this one too, if you're interested. The next allows me to control my three smart locks, three of the winners from my smart lock comparison video. 
The next one sets a scene in my office, and the last one triggers my nighttime routine if I want to do it manually. Let's recreate the one that controls my garage door. The first thing that I want is for the card's entity to be the garage door opener. This way, when I tap it, it's going to open and close the garage door. Next, I want the icon to change based on the state of the garage door. So I'll create a little if statement template based on the garage door sensor like so, so that it displays one icon for an open state and another for the closed state. I've used a spare contact sensor to replicate this so you can see the icon change as I open and close the sensor. The icons you specify come from the material design icon library, so you can look them up there if you want to see what icons are available and you just reference them by name with MDI as a prefix. I could also make the icon color change with the state of the door if I want with a similar if statement, making it blue if the door is closed and red if it's open. The last thing I did with these cards was some card mod formatting. And if you don't know much about that, I showed that in my last video on the subject. Setting the radius of the card's border to 40px, which makes it look like a circle when it's squished next to the other cards in a horizontal stack. To squish it down, let's cut that card and paste it into a horizontal stack five times. You can see that if we have five across, they become circles but they will elongate if this display is on a wide screen like a tablet or a computer screen. If you want to have less than five cards, but you still want to be able to have them in circles, what you can do is add a blank mushroom title card instead of one of these template cards to keep the spacing nice. If you want to, you can change the tap actions for these. For example, tap could be just to view more info about the garage, but a long press could be what actually triggers the door to open or close. The title card is another great card because it allows you to break up your dashboard with text. This means you can space out your view into sections, kind of like I've done here. They're also useful for spacers, like I mentioned before, leaving them blank with no text. What I really like about this card is that it doesn't have a background, transparent background, it's just sitting right on the canvas, and that means you don't have to use any card modding in order to remove that background, and you can use it for transparent looking cards. In this card, there are only title and subtitle fields where the title is bold and larger font and the subtitle isn't. Of course, with both these fields, you can use templating, so you can have it say literally whatever you want. You can change the alignment of this card and the tap actions as well. Nice little card. Okay, so those are some of my favorite mushroom cards. There are others that are meant for specific uses, like a fan card, a humidifier card, a media card, and more, but those are pretty basic, so I'm not gonna go over them in detail, but I do use them in some of my room views. Okay, now let's step it up a little bit and create something a little more complex using these mushroom cards and some of the stuff I've showed you in a previous video. You can see my room cards just below the buttons we just created, and they're actually made up of multiple cards all patched together to make a single card. The cards are all set side by side in horizontal stacks as well. We're gonna build the cards individually and then we're gonna put them together into one card. And I'm gonna show you how this is done by building one for a fictional office. We'll start with a mushroom entity card, and for the entity, we're gonna choose a temperature sensor that represents the temperature in the room. For the name, we should call it office or whatever the name of the room is. And a little further down, we'll set the icon type to none, which will hide the icon. For the tap action, we wanna set it to navigate. What navigate does is allow you to specify the path to any dashboard view that you want. This is gonna make the room card send you to the room view when you tap it. For the navigation path, just type office and we're gonna create a view that matches that path later on. If you've already created an office view in this dashboard, it's gonna be available as a drop-down item and you can select it. We're done with the entity card now so we can save it and move on to the next card. The next card we're gonna create is a chips card with a single chip. This is gonna be used to control the main light or all the lights in the office. For chip type, we're gonna choose a light chip and for the entity, we'll choose a main light or the group of lights in the office. For demo purposes, I'm just gonna choose a random light strip. You can change the icon if you want, but we're gonna leave the content option alone, which by default shows the state of the light. You can turn on use light color if you want, but I'm leaving it off for aesthetics. Now click the back arrow, change the alignment of the chips to end and click save. You can see that this shoves this chip over to the right. We have one more card to create, but let's first combine these two cards into one. 
To do this, we'll use the custom stack in card that I showed in my last video. Before we begin this card, we're gonna edit the entity card that we created just a moment ago, show the code editor, and copy all the code so we can paste it into the new card we're gonna make. We're gonna create a manual card now, and the type is gonna be custom stack in card. I'm gonna leave all this YAML on my GitHub. We'll set the mode property to horizontal, and for cards, we're gonna paste in the first card that we copied. Once you paste it in, you gotta select all that text you just pasted and press tab to indent it in a little bit. And then we're gonna add a dash in front of the type property of that card. We've added our entity card and now we need to copy over the chips card we created. It may be easier to have two windows open on your PC, one for editing and one for copying, but I'll just save this card, go copy the code for the chips card and then come back to edit again. Again, we edit the chips card, show code editor, and copy the code. Back to editing our combined card, we paste the chips card in, indent it by selecting it and pressing tab, and then add that dash in front of the type property. You can see it's combined the both into one card, but if you're using a theme that has card borders, like the default dark theme in Home Assistant, then we're gonna have to add some card modding to remove that border. We'll also remove the background color, box shadow, and border from the entire stack in card. After that, we can save this combined card. And if you don't wanna save the two individual ones, you can go ahead and delete those. The final piece of this whole combined card that we're gonna create is another custom card that I showed in my previous video, and that is the mini graph card. This is gonna display the temperature of the room over time. Under the entities property, we'll specify the temperature sensor. Under the show attribute, we'll set the state, name, and icons to false. I also set the points per hour property to one and the hours to show to 48. But you can play with these two properties if you want the graph to show less or more information. You can also change the line color if you want by setting the line color property and typing in either a color name or a hex value, or you can set color thresholds like I've shown here. It's probably easiest just to copy and paste the color thresholds that I've set up, adjusting the values as you see fit for your environment or temperature scale. So I won't go into details on how I've created those. Once this card's done, we'll copy all the text from this card to add to our combined card. Save this card though, just in case we need to come back to it for some reason. Okay, now back to editing our combined card and adding this last piece. We're actually gonna select all of the text that's in that combined card and press tab to indent that. Then we'll add a hyphen in front of the first type property. And we're gonna press enter to shift all of that text down and above it with no indentation, we're gonna add text to create a new stack in card, this time with the mode set to vertical. Now we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and we're gonna paste in our mini graph card that we copied before. And again, we're gonna select it and indent it by pressing tab. We'll add the hyphen in front of that type property again, and now you should see a combined card. We have to add a little bit of styling to this mini graph card to remove the background color, box shadow, and borders like we did with other cards. But after that, we're done. Okay, so this may have seemed like a lot of work and only for one card, but the beauty of cards in Home Assistant is that you can just copy and paste them and then you can change the entities and navigation paths and whatever else you need to in the card and save that for another room. You'll probably wanna replicate this for each room and you wanna put the rooms in horizontal stacks to keep the aesthetic of the dashboard. In edit mode, click the overflow menu for the card and click copy and then create a new card that's a horizontal stack and paste this in twice. Now you'll have two room cards next to each other and you can modify the second one for the next room. We can now copy this horizontal stack and then edit all the properties of these individual cards for as many rooms as we need to. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is how I set up my room views. I won't go into immense detail since I've covered most of the cards, but I will show you kind of how I've laid them out. Before I get into them though, there was something that was added since my last video. I mentioned at the beginning of this one, and that is sub views. When you create a new view, there's a little toggle that you can turn on or off that's for making the view a sub view. What this does is create a view whose tab is hidden, only appearing when in edit mode. If you make your home screen the main view and then all the rooms are sub views, 
then there will be no tabs at the top of your dashboard. And the only way to get to those room views will be by tapping those room cards and they'll navigate us to those rooms. Sub views by default have a back button in the top left corner and a menu button in the top right corner, just like we created with those chip cards. Because I like the look of the chips card better than the standard back arrow and menu button, and because I like to have the climate entity information up along that same banner, I opted not to use sub views. On top of that, I'm using a theme that hides those tabs at the top, so I really don't need to use sub views. Anyway, for each room, I put a chips card at the top with a back arrow, temperature and humidity sensors, and a menu button like I've already showed you how to do. The room view is broken up into sections by device type as you can see, with each section having a title that I created with a mushroom template card. For the light section, I have the section title in a horizontal stack with a chips card that allows you to toggle all lights in the area at once. This is super convenient. You can either toggle all the lights or you can go down and toggle the individual ones. Below the section title, I have mushroom light cards for each light and I've stacked them horizontally to keep the two column look. For the curtain section, I've used a mushroom cover card and I've left it the whole width of the dashboard because you need that extra room on the slider bar to set an accurate curtain position. Wherever there is a mushroom card specifically for a certain type of device or entity, I'll use that card. Otherwise, I'm just using the mushroom entity card. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it's given you some good ideas for how to set up mobile dashboards, and I hope it's shown you the power of those mushroom cards and how good they look. My first video on dashboards was wildly popular, so I'll definitely be continuing the series and I'll take your feedback into consideration, so please leave comments. In the next video, I wanna go over some of the cards that I love and use in my dashboards, and I also wanna show you how you can use automations with dashboards. If you wanna support the channel, you can subscribe and like the video, and if you wanna help out monetarily, you can pick up one of my custom shirts or you can become a member. Anyway, thanks for your time and thank you for watching. See ya.